Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to The Illusion of Hope for Negroes, a reply part 1. Remember, but it became Great Britain in every view to take a forward part. One half of this guilty commerce had been carried on by her subjects. As we had been great in our crime, let us be early in our repentance. The Committee on the Abolition of the Slave Trade in the British House of Commons, and this is from the book, The Debate on Emotion for the Abolition of the Slave Trade in the House of Commons on Monday and Tuesday, April 18th and 19th, 1791, and it was published in 1791. And from the British Parliamentary Debates of 1824, and let it not be forgotten, as Sir Samuel Romilly used to exclaim, these poor Negroes, destitute, miserable, unfriended, degraded as they are, are nevertheless His Majesty's liege subjects and are entitled to as much I. Let me remind my right honorable friend by the principles of our holy religion to more of the protection of the British Constitution because they are deserted, destitute, and degraded. On this very account, they have a peculiar claim to our sympathy and protection. And this is from the Parliamentary Debates, forming a continuation of the work entitled The Parliamentary History of England from the earliest period to the year 1803, published under the superintendence of T.C. Hansard, and it was published in 1824. And in this response video today, we are going to be responding to some comments we received from our previous videos on this series. Are we all Africans? Do you read some comments or hear some people say something like, we are all Africans? Have you ever wondered why the same people that say we are all Africans do not remember to condemn the killings in Africa the same way the slave masters and their media do not? Have you wondered why? If indeed we were all Africans, do you think the Nigerian government and the Cameroonian government would be killing Nigerians or Cameroonians or so-called Africans on the behest of the European slave masters, most especially the British? The Golden Calves If you are still under the yoke of mental slavery by running after the slave masters Golden Calves of Christianity and Islam, why do you think someone who has not allowed you freedom here on earth could have given you the religions of Christianity and Islam if they could free you from the suffering and bondage the slave master wants you to remain under. Imagine also that even the slave master's BBC cannot report truth about the suffering and killings in Biafra and Ambazonia today, but somehow you believe they could have given the Negroes Christianity or Islam if there was power or truth in them. Ask yourself that simple question. And if we digress a little before we go into our topic of today, on your screen, you would see the British High Commissioner to Nigeria in a picture with the descendants of the slave hunters who are prosecuting a supposedly British citizen, Gordon Nandekano, simply because he asked for freedom of his people in Biafra. And in the picture of Nandekano seen on handcuffs, you will see Clearly, the British exhibit why they were the world's biggest slave traders and slave hunters and they exported more slaves than anyone else from the Bights of Biafra and Benin during the slave trade. So that attribute has never left them. But then, if you still had doubts as to who and who were responsible for the brutal transatlantic and trans-Sahara slave trades, now we ask you, looking at the picture of the prosecutor prosecuting a supposedly British citizen in Inam de Kano for asking for freedom of Piafra from a British slave contraption called Nigeria. What does that picture tell you? Remember, tomorrow they will write that it is so-called Africans oppressing or killing or enslaving fellow Africans. They will no longer write that these unintelligent hermetic groups were doing it on the behest of the European slave masters, unfortunately. And also on your screen, you will see the same British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Katrina Lang, with another descendant of the slave hunters 
who is the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Nigeria, to show you where the prosecution of Nandekano is coming from and who is actually responsible for the wars and killings going on in West and Central Africa today. And also, in another picture, you will see the same woman with the descendants of the slave hunters in uniform. Remember, they work together based on the British policy of ruling through the Fulanese. The Fulanese were their slave hunting accomplices during the slave trade. And the comment in the tweet we got it from says, British High Commissioner to Nigeria in a Shoebi uniform with Fulani governors. I am yet to know if this madam has been given another office in Nigeria, aside being the British High Commissioner to Nigeria. Her activities in Nigeria against non-Fulanese in Nigeria is suspicious, and this tweet was made on July 10th, 2021. It was not from us, but we just covered the name of the poster for various reasons. But this should help you understand where the relationship of the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices are coming from. And that is why you will never hear the British or their BBC condemn the killings in West and Central Africa because they are the ones supporting, encouraging, inciting and sponsoring their slave hunting accomplices to be doing that. And further, in this fake news BBC Igbo post or news or whatever nonsense they write. Remember, it's all about lies and propaganda by the British against the Negroes, the same way they were during the slave trade. She said here, although in Igbo language, that they had asked for permission from the Nigerian government to help Namdekano. Remember, to ask them who is the Nigerian government, the same British. And this was why we showed you a picture of this same woman with the prosecutor, the attorney general of the federation and the lawyer of the government prosecuting a fellow African on the behest of the British and to expose the hypocrisy of the slave master, in this case the British, you will see that Namdekano happens to be a British citizen. But like they always say, if you want to understand the crisis, follow the money. If you want to understand the slave trade, follow the British. You will see the slave trade in full glare. And that was why the British Prime Minister wrote this article in defense of the atrocities and the evil of the British against the Negroes during the slave trade and suggesting that colonialism should never have ended. So this should help you understand where they are going. But do you blame them? When you can see all these men you see here in the picture with the British High Commission, just one of them, that should show you why they consider the Negroes as inferior, even when those people there are of the Hamitic stock, they are not Negroes. So you can get them to kill their supposed siblings on the behest of the slave master, unfortunately, because of their lack of humanity and common sense. And so if you ever doubted us before or doubted any of the books showing who and who were the slave hunters and who worked with the slave masters against the Negroes during the slave trade, we are certainly sure by now, if you have not read the books, you must be convinced. Even though you saw people like Mr. himself alone, who were impostors, hiding behind false identities to be defending the atrocities of the slave hunters, especially the Fulanese, during the slave trade. Permit us then to send this little message across to the slave master to see if that feeling of humanity can, for the first time in human history, be gotten from the British authorities and establishment, including their royalty. And so we reference parliamentary debates forming a continuation of the work entitled The Parliamentary History of England from the earliest period to the year 1803, published under the superintendence of T.C. Hansard, Volume 9, comprising the period from the first day of May to the 19th day of July, 1823, and this was published in 1824. Here we see that, and let it never be forgotten, as Sir Samuel Romilly used to exclaim, these poor Negroes, destitute, miserable, unfriended, degraded as they are, are nevertheless His Majesty's Liege subjects and are entitled to as much I. Let me remind my right honorable friend, by the principles of our holy religion, 
to more of the protection of the British constitution because they are deserted, destitute and degraded. On this very account, they have a peculiar claim to our sympathy and protection and we are by this asking the British government who were told this during the slave trade in 1820s and in 2020 they are still doing the same thing to supposedly their own citizen in Nandekano. When will they start being human? When will they start showing humanity to others? And exhibit in practical terms those things they claim, albeit hypocritically, of being the beacon of hope, the symbol of freedom, and all those beautiful things they claim, albeit falsely though. When will they start showing those in reality? And before we move on from this particular material, we want you to look on top. You will see House of Commons. Mr. Fowell Buxton's motion for the abolition of slavery. Please take note of the name as we shall be visiting it later in this video. And if you are in doubt that what is happening to Nandekano and the Biafra and Ambazonia struggles are related to the slave trade, remember the British are the symbols of the slave trade. They were the world biggest exporters of Negro slaves from the Bight of Biafra and Bight of Benin. They were also the biggest player in the slave trade business. It was more or less an article of faith to the Church of England, which if you doubt us, you are welcome to challenge us or research it yourself. So this is why you see that they are the ones fighting against Biafra and Ambazonia freedom. And above all, they are actually the ones holding in Namdekano, not any Nigerian government, because the Nigerian government is the British. And if you doubt us, get them to condemn the killings going on there one day. That's all we challenge you to do. Remember, they can't do that because they are the sponsors. So if they did that, their slave hunting accomplices might react by saying, but you were the ones that sent us. That's why you see that their BBC or their media are always silent or in support of the killings. They must find a pretext. They must find a reason or create one to justify those killings. And so, let us reference impressions of Western Africa with remarks on the diseases of the climate and a report on the peculiarities of trade up the rivers in the Bight of Biafra by Thomas J. Hutchinson, Esquire, Her Britannic Majesty's Consul for the Bight of Biafra and the Island of Fernanda Po, and this was published in 1858. So those that suggest that Ojuku created Biafra, you should know that they are ignorant. This is why they always position the quota system products that are badly educated in positions of authority so that they can draw the curriculum and hide the things they don't want you to see. So here we see that in 1618, a charter was granted by James I to Sir Robert Rich to establish a regular slave trading company to Africa, which however, for want of integrity in its formation, soon broke up. But going further down, you see where it says, the opening of the slave trade was a blot upon the grand geographical discoveries of the Portuguese in the 15th century. But it should never be forgotten that the trade commenced by Captain Hawkins was legalized in Great Britain for nearly two centuries and was even under royal patronage. So you see that the British government is all about the slave trade. So when they tell you it was legalized, they made it legal for people to be doing it. But today they turned around to tell us that it could have been the arrow. Remember, it was what they did to the arrow. That they are trying to do to Simon Eber. So they will do it, betray them the canoe, and then tell you it was Simon Eber. The same thing they did to the arrow, where it was them that did the slave hunting and slave trading. And then they turned around and used their propaganda and lies to say it could have been the arrow priests. But leaving that apart for now, it goes on to say, in the spirit of that period, one of Hawkins' vessels in his second voyage which comprised 10 ships was styled the Jesus and another the John the Baptist while he the apostle of the trade was knighted on his return by Queen Elizabeth now you are telling us that these same people that did all this and who were bold enough to lie about it till today they are doing the same thing in Biafra and in Ambazonia and you are telling us that they could have brought you a path to heaven or hell 
or anywhere better than they could have allowed you to live freely here on earth. That's impossible. And that's our biggest proof that Christianity and Islam are mere golden calves and never true or related to the creative force that could have brought the heavens and the earth and everything else into existence. And going further here, it says, A history of the slave trade is not my purpose here, and these few observations have only been drawn forth by the recollection that the places by which we have now passed were the great original slave trade mats before the traffic found its way to the windward and leeward coast, as well as to the bites of Benin and Biafra. Now we ask you, when we told you that Nelly Ofewu that he's talking about Idu is actually working for the slave master, you probably doubted us. Remember, the reason they are running away from the name Biafra is because it's a reminder of their atrocities during the slave trade. So that's why they commissioned that woman to come and start saying that. Think about it yourself. Somebody has been working within Namdekano for months or for years, whatever time period it was. And as soon as Namdekano was betrayed and kidnapped by the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices, she came up with Idu alleging or claiming that a spirit told her about Idu. Now ask yourself, why didn't that spirit tell her about Idu before Namdekano was kidnapped? And remember to ask yourself, it's common knowledge that if you want to deceive the Negroes, just find a way to put God or the spirit in there. She has seen that there is no way she can put God. She now put the spirit to her. But leaving that apart for now, we at least saw that there were British slave ships called Jesus. And there was another called John the Baptist. And that's very important to note that slave hunters were also knighted by Queen Elizabeth. That shows you that the British supported the slave trade and they supported what they were doing. Remember, this was where they came and captured people against their will. So that when they tell you it could have been a cell. Our question to you remains, how can somebody sell you if you're a Negro or a black person listening to this? It's just like Namdekano, for example. We all saw how they colluded and together they went and kidnapped him from wherever and started telling us stories. That was exactly how the slave trade also happened. When they finish, they will find someone else to blame. Above all, if you looked at the case of Nandikano, you will see that they tried to use Simon Ipa as the scapegoat. So imagine what would have happened if there was no social media and no internet and it was only FRCN and BBC. They would have just told us that it was Sinomen but that sold him. That's exactly how the slave master and his slave hunters operate. Let us also reference adventures and observations on the west coast of Africa and its islands. Historical and descriptive sketches of Madra, Canary, Biafra and Cape Verde Islands, their climates, inhabitants and productions, accounts of places, peoples, customs, trade, missionary operations, etc. On that part of the African coast, lying between Tangier, Morocco and Benguela, by Rev. Charles W. Thomas, M.A., member of the Georgia Conferences, chaplain to the African Squadron in 1855, 1856 and 1857, and this was published in 1860. Here we see that in the early part of the 17th century, the demand for laborers in the rich and widening fields of the West Indies and Spanish America suggested the idea of making a profitable trade by buying Negroes in Africa and selling them in the markets of the New World. Always remember that they don't buy the Negroes in Africa. They captured them and that was the duty of the Nigerian army. At least what they have done in Biafra and Ambazonia case where somebody will see another person that did nothing to him just because he said he wanted freedom. He will get him and kill him and the slave master looks the other way. It's enough proof to everybody that the Nigerian army was the slave hunters. They only renamed this army in 1863 which will encourage you to investigate. The Portuguese, who had already entered the slave trade between the coast and the markets of Europe, now established lines of slavers between the towns of Guinea and Saint Domingo. So going further down, it says, They anchored their vessels off the trading settlements, entered the forts by force, and so completely took the trade into their own hands that at the close of 1637, there was not a Portuguese trading station on the Gold Coast. The English followed the example of the Dutch. 
drove them in turn from several of their forts, of which we shall speak more particularly under appropriate heads, and for many years the British lion fattened himself on the lion's share of the African slave trade till tomorrow. So that is why you are seeing the British High Commissioner there. Remember, it is likely why they left the EU. They know that the EU charter may not allow them to do this. They've been doing it for centuries. So that's why they went to kidnap an Namdekano. He goes on further here to say, His conscience did not then interfere with his digestion. He hunted, ate and slept well, and his coat became smooth and glossy. Some will have it that he was a grown lion then, that the relative positions of conscience and stomach were permanently fixed, that they are now in statu quo and that if his peptic strength is not now what it was then, something other than moral sensibility interferes with the capacity of his powerful organs to assimilate such food. Remember the lion being talked about here is the British lion. We are disposed, however, to attribute only the best of qualities to the noble and venerable brute, and to hope that like some other heaven-favored sinners, he has been blessed with an increase of conscientious sensibility in his old age. Remember, the British were so involved in the slave trade that they were known for it. They were so eager that is, they didn't allow stopping it. And if you doubted it and you are too lazy to research, just look at their reaction to just mere agitation for freedom in Biafra and Ambazonia today. You see how they are almost creating war there. Don't mind their slave hunting accomplices. Those ones lack humanity and common sense. They don't know what they are doing. They don't have sense. That's just the truth. It doesn't matter how you see it. Think about it. People in Scotland can ask for freedom, ask for independence, and they do a referendum. Nobody kills the other. But mentioning Biafra in Nigeria, their slave hunting accomplices will be incited to kill innocent men, women, and children for no reason. And we believe that should be enough to tell you how they are slave hunting accomplices reason. And further down, you see where it says the Upper Guinea is divided into Liberia, which extends from the Galenas River to the San Pedro, the Ivory Coast, which extends from San Pedro to Cape Three Points, the Gold Coast, which lies between Cape Three Points and Cape St. Paul, and the coast of the Gulf or Bight of Benin, sometimes called the Slave Coast, which is comprised between Cape St. Paul and the mouths of the Niger. Now remember, they come and abandon any name the Negroes had for their towns and cities and impose their own. And it goes further to say, Lower Guinea may be divided into four divisions, the coast of Biafra, the coast of Loango, the coast of Angola, and the coast of Benguela. So much for the geography of the coast. But at least you see Biafra there. These are the reasons they are looking for a way for people to abandon the name Biafra and be talking about Idu. So that tomorrow they will ask you, okay, where is Idu? Where historically is Idu? Remember, these are people that all they know is lying. And this takes us to the case of people like the real Makaba, for example. If you watch his videos, you will hear him some places say something like, it makes sense to enslave those who are already on ground and that bringing people from Africa didn't make sense at all. Always bear in mind that the slave master is looking for a way to wash himself clean of his atrocities as a slave hunter. And that is why all those people are there. And never forget, they will start by telling you what looks like the truth or what they think you want to hear just to buy your confidence. The moment they get you close, they will start with the lies. For example, if somebody is telling you that it doesn't make sense to enslave those who are there claiming that they were already in the US, if you know the real Makaba, for example, you will see that he has volumes of research. So we are not sure whether this is something to do with a deliberate attempt to falsify information. So he claims that the Negroes were already there, but they did not provide any evidence. Do not be surprised, that's the only thing the slave master wants him to sell that they were already there before because they were looking for a way to now claim that the slave trade never happened. If you looked at the case of Den Calloway, for example, remember he started talking about how the slave trade was how they captured Indians, shipped them to Europe, then to Africa and back to America and classified them as African slaves. When you started listening, he started saying that boats could no longer cross the Atlantic Ocean. Remember that? Then after that, he has now said that the slave trade never happened. 
that's who they are. The slave master is a subtle beast. Remember, if he wasn't working for the slave master, he wouldn't be telling those lies the way he is. So when the real Macabre claims that the, what made sense was for them to enslave those that were on ground already, the question becomes, are the Negroes the same with the Native Americans? They are certainly not the same. Now, what about those that were shipped to Cuba? What about those that were shipped to Brazil? What about those that were shipped to Haiti? Those that were shipped to Jamaica? Those who were shipped to the Caribbean? To Persia? To Turkey? To Middle East? What about the Negroes that were shipped to those areas? What happened to them? So they were aborigines or indigenous too? Remember, the Americans do not see outside America. And that's why the slave master continues to use them against their siblings elsewhere around the world. You saw how they used so-called African Americans to protest in defense of the killings going on by their slave hunting accomplices in West and Central Africa today. And above all, they seem to forget that the Indians did not make good slaves. They were not strong enough. If you looked at the Negroes, you will see why they made the good choice as slaves, at least. A little look at the leadership of IPOB today should tell you why the Negroes are the perfect slaves. You saw how the leadership ganged up against Namdekano for one reason or another, as if the freedom would not benefit them and their generations unborn. So you see how they are ready to sacrifice everything just to get at their sibling. Remember when we made the video about the sinusoidal waveform and the Negro brain, but that's a different story altogether. And so, to our topic of today, we got a comment from One King X Original that said, The Renaissance, unfortunately, the narrative that Negroes sold other Negroes are still being propagated heavily today. So, the link to a video on YouTube showed the case of that Obani that claimed that her great grandfather sold slaves. Remember, the slave master is the one that gets them to write those things. We are not sure whether they are intelligent enough to know that they are lying against supposedly their own people. But never forget, the devil has to always speak through the serpent. So that's why you see, today we are talking about the lady that wrote that thing and not talking about the slave master directly because the devil is hiding behind the serpent. And so on that YouTube channel, we saw another group talking about that article thinking that it was true remember the problem with the negro is you can lie today and they will believe it if you doubt what we're saying if you looked at the ipob leadership you will see that after the abduction of nandi Kano, which can clearly be seen as sabotage because he was betrayed but we see how they turned around to be blaming simon Eber, telling us that somebody who was not a member of ipob could have been the one that sold Nam the Kano. And not only that, that was also coming to hijack the struggle. And you saw that some people actually believed them. But we leave that apart for now. We see that here, these people are talking about the article written by this lady as if it was true. And like we had done in the past, we had debunked it severally. We made about three videos on it, proving that it was wrong and it was a lie. Here was one of the videos we made when we debunked that article because we know it's a lie. And above all, think about it yourself. Have you ever seen somebody bragging that his parents were armed robbers? Because that's exactly what the slave trade was like. But like we told you, the slave master gets them to write things like this and then uses it as if he is innocent. Again, we remind you that it was never a sale. And if you doubt what we're saying, if you had teenage children for example imagine how you could have taken them to the market to sell them but the slave master was able to tell this lie at that time he claimed that the negroes were not human so they were just like cattle you know how you can take cattle to the market and sell it and it doesn't make any noise or any troubles that was exactly the picture of the negro that the slave master painted to the rest of humanity so that was why he was able to get away with it so if you are talking of a sale our challenge to you is the Nigerian army was the slave hunting terror group. How can an army be about 100 years older than the country claims to be an army of? What was it doing before Nigeria was created? That should be your question. And in the event you don't understand how the slave master plays his tricks on the Negroes. Remember, the Negroes make perfect slaves. We will leave 
other attributes apart for now, but we want you to listen to Malcolm X in this video. When you are done listening to him, you will see that it is the same thing that they are repeating in IPOB leadership today. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, to whom all praise is due, whom we forever thank for giving us the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as our leader, teacher, and guide. And I specifically, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and brothers and sisters, uh, open up like that because I am a representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And were it not for him, you and I wouldn't be here today. In order for you and me to devise some kind of method or strategy to offset some of the events or re a repetition of the events that have taken place here in Los Angeles recently, we have to go to the root. We have to go to the cause. Dealing with the condition itself is not enough. We have to get to the cause of it all or the root of it all. And it is because of our effort toward getting straight to the root that people oftentimes think we are dealing in hate. But first, I would like to congratulate and give praise to the Negro, so-called Negro leaders and so-called Negro organizations. And excuse me if I say so-called, it's hard for me to just outright say Negro when I know what that word Negro really means. <laughs> The person whom you have come to know as Ronald Stokes, we know him as Brother Ronald. One of the most religious persons who displayed the highest form of morals of any black person anywhere on this earth. And as one of the previous speakers pointed out who knew him, everyone who knew him had to give him credit for being a good man, a clean man, an intelligent man an, uh, and an innocent man when he was murdered. The Negro, so-called Negro organizations and, and, uh, and uh, leaders should be given great credit for their failure or refusal to let the white man divide them and use them one against the other during this crisis. 